Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and today it's an Alina Craft Let's Make This and what we're going to make is is this. This is the set of five stencils. These are layering stencils that I shared with you yesterday in the haul. So we're going to be using those. They also come with matching dies which I have cut apart so once you've stenciled you cut your flowers out because these are um, roses I believe they're roses I hope they are and I'm also using to place those roses on there the oval set and this is the largest one so you'll get a plain and you'll also get the fancy now I'm going to cut one base I'm going to cut two tops because my intention is to put one front and back and score the other and use it like an easel. Well, that's the idea anyway. Right, so I'm just going to go and die cut and then we'll start the stenciling. Okay, so I've done that and I've gone for a really bright sunshine yellow cardstock. Uh, this is one from Joanne. Uh, I don't know if they still have the sales. I haven't been in there for oh it's got to be over 12 months now because i bought so much cardstock but it was like 25 cents a sheet so that's when i got this and it's a lovely yellow and it's uh, basil cardstock and i've cut two of the toppers in white the idea being obviously that one is going to go on there and my flowers will go on there i apologize if it's uh going a bit blurred the sky's a bit gray and then onto the reverse of there will go that one so that leaves you room to write your sentiment and what have you and then I'm going to score it here so the idea is it will stand up it will stand up at quite a slope so that you can actually see the card and uh, let's hope that works <laughs> right that's going to be popped up on foam pads on the front just for a wee bit of dimension and I'll be using my Dollar Tree foam pads to do that right now onto the stencils the stencils are six by six I'll just get all the fluff off my paper and they are numbered one through to five and that is the order in which you use them so you're going to go with the largest space first and then you will layer them up now I'm only going to use one color of ink I'm going to be using uh, mustard seed and I'm choosing Distress Ink because personally I feel that I have more control over the shading as we go through those five layers as opposed to using Oxide which is a very saturated colour right from the very start. So I've got two of my swirly twirly brushes here which I love and for the leaves which are on the side of the stencil here I'm just going to be using peel paint and then building that up in colour. So those are the two shades. We've got mustard seed, peel paint. I've got two of my swirly twirlies. I've got my stencils and I've cut my sheet of cardstock to six by six. This is my Tim Holtz stamp platform. I love this because you can take the lid off and I've got my one magnet here which is holding that sheet of cardstock down but if I pick my stencils up put that into there I'm hoping I can move it up enough there you are so that you can see it now you can see I've got my piece of cardstock butted up nicely into the corner my magnet here is holding it and now we're going to go down with sheet number one and we're going to butt that up into the corner as well, exactly the same as the cardstock. And we're going to use the magnet now, and that will hold both the paper and your stencil down onto the platform. Right, so here goes mustard seed. Try and make space so that you can see, even if it's uh, on the edge. And as I said, it's about building up the colour. So I'm just picking up just ever such a wisp can you see that of mustard seed it's barely barely covering the tip there I'll put my lids on because my inks go uh, a little bit weird and I am quite literally stippling it and it is going to look quite 
quite blotchy. I'm going to keep my finger down on that bit. And it may not look as if you're putting any colour down, but you actually are. Now, it doesn't matter if you're darker in some places than others when using stencils like this. It actually enhances them. So I know now that the colour there is totally different to the white cardstock underneath. And I'm going to just lift that up on the corner to show you. You see? It's just barely there, but it is there. And now make sure everything is lined up again. It's so much easier to do this on a stamp platform. Same there. Now these are the green ones, these are the leaves, and I'm going to be doing those last. So I'm going a bit quiet, sorry. Right, so just, you know, barely skip it across the surface. Don't worry about any blotchy bits because that just adds to your kind of your shading and your colour as you're going along. Now, these three of the leaves, this is a bud. So got to do that as well. And just keep your hand on it and you can see it's just very very pale very subtle and um, I might just put just a little bit up here right I think that's okay for that right I've shown you how to do that whoops I'm forgetting I've got to do the leaves yeah she says getting carried away so I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the leaves really pale so it might just look, you know, very blotchy. And that's okay. Just run it out. And wear it out on your brush. You might be thinking what an awful mess with this one, but it all becomes apparent towards the end. Right, so that is our first layer. And you might think it's an awful mess, but don't think that. Right, now then, take that off. Keep your paper in your corner. You always know that your paper's in the corner, so that's a great thing. And then we're going to go in with stencil number two. Magnet down again. And back into our mustard seeds and I'm just going to do the larger one just to show you I'm picking up a little bit more yellow this time and going into that area but it's still not the full strength of mustard seed and I will lift that up and show you at how different that is to the paler one below Get my fingers under. Can you see that? So you start to pick it up now. Right, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, just a little bit of extra yellow, and I'll be right back. Right, so now we've got down um, layers one and two, which was adding just a little bit extra of exactly the same colours, and now putting down stencil number three. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And I'm going to show you the big flower again and then go off and do the others. So a little bit of extra yellow. We're still not maxing out yet on this uh, mustard seed. So I'm going to pick that up and show you. She says hopefully. There we go. See that? It's starting to build up and... You know, the fact that it was blotchy before, it just doesn't matter. It starts to vanish. Right, I'm going to finish the others exactly the same and I'll be right back. Right, so now we've got layer three completed and we're going to go down now with layer four. Exactly the same as we've done the others here. And now we can start to get a little bit stronger with the mustard seed. Popping that into there. 
pick up a little bit there a little bit there and I still haven't used you know the the majority of the depth of the color which is when you you know you really pick it up and get your brush totally saturated with it so that was really quick to do a little bit in there and now we go down with number five And this is the one where you get your brush. If you're using a brush or, or a foam, it's entirely up to you. Where you can go in and just get, you know, really juiced up. Well, I've already got the lid off the green. So I'm going to finish the leaves. See how nice and wet that ink is. And on this layer, you're kind of, you know, giving it all you've got on this one. Pop the lid on that, get the yellow off, and we're going to the max on this now. And you start to see how lovely and bright this mustard seed is. This is one of my favourite colours. It's great for doing sunflowers. Quite nice actually if Lena Craft bought out a sunflower stencil. If you're listening, Alina, <laughs> we need a sunflower stencil, you know, a nice size that fits on cards. And there's plenty of um, really, really big sunflower stencils. But, you know, we need things that fit onto cards. And put a bit more yellow down in there. And that was our fifth one. So we should see the dramatic change in all of that now when I lift that up. So let's have a peek. Right, there we go. So that was one through to five and take my bits of fluff off there. And now we've got our dies and our dies will just position on top and you'll go and cut them out if you need to do um a ghost you know some people need to cut uh, get another sheet of cards cut all their dies out and use them as a template so that they get them nice and accurate but this is basically what you need to do now to um be able to cut these and that's exactly what i'm going to go and do so i'm going to cut these out and we'll put the card together and uh, i'm going to be right back Right, so those are all cut out and all that's left is to uh, do the base and put the uh, the card together. So I've scored this at one and a half and I've scored an eighth on the edge there. Now I'm trying to retrieve my scissors which are stuck on a magnet. Right, and I'm going to cut that edge off because, you know, as I've said previously, if you do this and you've got a curved edge then your card is going to rock so I've just taken the edge off there and I'm going to use glue and this is going to go onto the back so I'm going to bend that up slightly there we go and we just want to glue onto the largest size of the oval not the largest size but the largest side there we go and that's going to go onto the back and now that we can see that we're nowhere near that score line we can try and place that kind of central as if um, you're just putting the topper on that's basically where you want to go now you can lift that to make sure that nothing's squeezed underneath to uh, impede anything else from happening. And as you can see, you know, you've got a lot of space there to stamp a sentiment or write comments or whatever. Now, of course, the thing always is, is, is it going to stand up? And uh, even though it's not dry yet, we need to find out. And maybe I do need to let it dry first because <laughs> you know me and my disasters let's see if that does it yeah it might be that the leg needs to come out further 
Mm. No, that isn't actually going to work. I think it needs to be dropped down lower. But otherwise it would work. But it's always good to have a disaster first thing in the morning. But that is standing up, but it's at an extreme angle. And I guess, it, you know, an extreme angle is not bad, you know, like that. That might be a bit too extreme for some. But at least you, you're able to actually, you know, view the card and, and see what's going on there. So anyway, that is drying. The glue is where it needs to be. And I'm going to flip it over and do my card topper, which is going on there. And I'm going to just tear off a few Dollar Tree foam pads. And I'm going to stick them on the back. Going all the way around. In fact, I'll pause and come back when I put them on. Right, so they're on and I've peeled all the backs off and you have to excuse this. This is black marker pen. <laughs> right, now I need to get that in the centre. So I'm just standing up for a second to make sure that I'm doing just that. And I think that's it. And while I'm standing, I may as well stay standing, but I'll try really hard not to shout. Now, I think this one really is the star of the show, isn't it? You know, the nice big one. And I'm going to put that in the centre. And it could be that I'm not going to use all of the flowers that I've just done. We shall see. So I know that that one is going to be the star and it's in the middle. And then I've got other little ones. I know I can go off the edges into um, my yellow border. And then I've got this other one here. Let's get my nails underneath it. Oh, I don't know. It could be that I am going to use <laughs> kind of like I want that one fading into the background maybe up there like having a nice big bouquet of roses but you want to stay stay inside of your border and I've got this lovely bud here and I actually think the two buds might look nice together Maybe one there. And then, of course, we've got leaves. So I'm kind of thinking if I pop them all on, kind of that. Yeah, that's fully loaded, that is. So how you see those there is how I'm just going to run off and glue them. Right, so those are all glued down and if you watch my videos you'll know that I just arrange things where I want them and then I just hold them down with my finger and I put my um, needle tip underneath each piece, drop a, a little blob of glue and then just press down and then everything where I've placed it is basically where I've placed it. Now the only thing missing now of course is the star of the show and I have peeled the backs off there and... I'm kind of thinking if I want it over over on an edge slightly. Now the nice thing about Dollar Tree foam pads is that they're not permanent until you press. So you can just like rest things like that. But I'm okay with that. So I'm going to push. Right. Now let's have a look how that easel behaves now with the weight of the card. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. I haven't got it squashed down far enough. But I think you can actually see a little bit more of that now. And that just fell over. So it needs to be dropped down a fraction. As you can see, I've kind of centered it up. I would drop it down a quarter of an inch and I would score a bigger piece. And that would stand up a lot, lot better because it's quite heavy, if you know what I mean. But it does stand up. 
but you just want it to be nice and right first time. So that is what I've got for you today. And I just think that's absolutely gorgeous. It's really sweet. And I am up tomorrow with the layering stamp set that people have asked to see. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And as usual, all links below. Have an absolutely awesome day. Bye.